and they're a good fit as they come together a coarse thread so that it locks up quickly and easily so hopefully you can see the two sloping surfaces there welcome back to workshop friend and this is video number 11 on renovating my small adcock and shipley horizontal miller machine today it's very cold in the workshop it's the depth of winter here in the UK. I'm going to put the gas heater on in a minute just to take the chill off in here. We're going to be working on the overarm support bracket, uh, this casting. Most of the work on that is already done. But today we need to focus on the cotter arrangement at the top here. So that's made of two parts and also the bore for the journal to support the arbor. I'm going to start with the cotter because we may use that as part of the machining process for this and I'll show you the material I've got for the cotter. So this is one of the cotters from the head of the machine so we need to make another one like this to go in here and uh, it has two parts basically uh, with a half inch threaded section that goes through and a nut on the end there and basically it pulls these two parts together and this radius section interferes with the two and a half inch diameter cast iron bar and locks it in position. Since the correct design of the cotter involves some geometry, I thought it was a good idea to produce this simple general arrangement. The cotter is the kind of cotter you'd find in the tailstock quill of a lathe or the quill of a milling machine, and it basically comprises two components. The male part has a thread on the end, and as the bolt is tightened, it forces the female part to the left. And the two sloping surfaces grip the bar on a lathe of course that will be the quill and that results in a line load at the top there two line loads and is distributed load at the bottom as the bar sits in the casting so it's quite an efficient way of locking up a mechanism like this the consequence of that is that there's an upward load on the cotter on the left hand side that's fairly straightforward since it's solid but on the right hand side it comprises a ring with an inner bolt and since that ring is a little bit on the thin side there was a possibility of it squashing. So for that reason, I included a land shown here, which enables the load to transfer directly through the inner component to the top and then into the casting. Here are the dimensions for the two components. And these are the dimensions I used in the process that you're about to see. So although the nominal size of the cotter is one and one eighth inches, I've actually got one and a quarter inch bright mild steel here the reason for that is postage including this one and a quarter inch bar was a cheaper option for me i got excess so i can use it for another project bright mild steel free cutting perfectly adequate for this uh, there's not particularly a high wearing uh, application and it's not going to be particularly heavily loaded and uh, it makes machining easier so uh, what, what i'm going to do now is uh, cut off um, six and a half inches so that I can make uh, both parts from that piece and um, I'm going to use the extra length of this component as a work holding device while I machine this part and then that will be cut off and then I can work on this on its own. Now I have tailstock support I can start roughing the bar to the approximate outside diameter. And here I'm marking out the position of the two shoulders. Again, I'm only roughing out at this stage. And I realized that I needed to pull the work out of the chuck a little further so I could turn as much as possible the outside diameter in one setting. I still haven't invested in a live center. I'm using an old-fashioned dead center, which seems to work fine as long as I remember to put oil on it. For most of my work, this is more than adequate. Marking out again the extent of the half inch diameter, which will be threaded 12 TPI half inch whip work. Mm. 
Now this is the bit of the job I wasn't really happy with. I had to machine the last part to the correct diameter. Really I should have left extra material for work holding or machine the whole thing between centers. Before removing the work from the lathe, I'm marking out the section that needs to be milled away. So I've reinstalled the vertical head on the mill, put the vise on the table, and I've got the work in there. And if I just zoom in, I've scribed the inner extent of the slot. So the slot comes down to somewhere like this. So I'm going to mill that slot out. That's one end of it. That's the other end of it. So having got to depth, I can measure off the top face here, measure to depth, and then put the two angled faces in. But before I do that, I've just got to make sure this is parallel to the table. Okay, that will do for that. I'm deburring the edge of the slot so that I can get a decent measurement with the depth micrometer. So we've got to drop down another 0.152 inches, which is 3.86 millimeters. So I'll raise the table about 3.5 millimeters and then measure again before taking a final cut. The drawing calls for an angled surface at 47 degrees from vertical, so I've rotated the head and milling on the side of the cutter. Now rotating the head the other way for the complementary angle. I thought I'd turn my attention to finishing off the casting and uh, I've just uh, filled some of the holes there and uh, hopefully I can start painting that. Since the weather's so cold, it's going to take a while to do this. So I thought that get get that going uh, early on, hopefully in time for finishing this video. So this is the work, the cotter, the two cotters actually, um, where we've got to so far. And the reason that I left a lot of extra material on here and here is because I knew when I milled this out it was going to distort. And uh, because this is bright drawn mild steel, um, there's going to be a lot of inbuilt stresses there and I've cut a lot of one half away uh, almost one half so it's definitely going to bend so we'll put this back in the lathe and we will finish these sizes and put the half inch Whitworth 12 TPI thread on there we have a nine and a half thou run out on the end so here it's four thou run out I know this chuck runs concentrically, so that is genuine 
run out as a result of distortion here. But fortunately I've left plenty of allowance on here for turning this down for the half inch thread and also this diameter here which I want to be a nice good fit in the mating component. It's easier to cut a short section to the right final diameter and then rough out the rest of the material to it. So that's why I've done this several times in making this component. Now making an undercut in preparation for cutting the 12 TPI screw thread. Check that this really is a 12 TPI thread. I don't have a gearbox on my Myford Super 7 so I have to change the gears but yes that's 12 TPI. So what I need to do now is uh, cut this end off. I'll take this over to the bench and hacksaw this off. And this will make the complementary part of the cotter. That needs to be faced and then bored to be a nice snug fit over here. And then the complementary flat on the other side milled in. It's now necessary to make this a nice fit on the corresponding component. But it's not necessary for this to be an accurate fit along the whole length. And as I mentioned before, there was some possibility of malalignment. So what I'm going to do is to ensure that it's an accurate fit where it needs to be here, and at the two ends it can be relieved. Again, I'm just turning a short length to the right diameter, getting that size correctly, and then I can remove the rest of the material confidently, knowing that I'm not going to be oversized.
Now to relieve the two ends to the correct depth, which is a bit tricky inside a small hole. So I've rigged up this uh, ad hoc carry stop using um, a piece of stock and an engineer's clamp. And I'm just setting the correct depth here and I'm going to work up to that on both ends. In preparation for milling out this feature, I'm going to apply some layout blue and determine the inner corner there, uh, scribe that line, and also the diameter. And I'm going to use those lines to work up to when I'm milling. So back over to the milling machine to rough out most of the material as a square block down to that corner using the scribe lines as a guide. In order to achieve a little more accuracy I'm using a depth gauge here to mill right up to the center line. So I'm just uh, <clears throat> rotating the head now to 47 degrees and that's the last bit of milling on this I hope. Just one small turning job remains and that is to make a washer. The cot is now completed, so we have the male part of it here with its sloping surface and the female part with its complementary sloping surface. And they're a good fit, ensure that this land here, which you can just see there, I've just placed it in that middle section directly underneath 
this sloping surface. We've got the washer here which we just made and the half inch Whitworth nut on the end here. A coarse thread so that it locks up quickly and easily. It's also the same thread as the nuts on the other cotters already on the machine. So it will fit into the machine like this. It can actually go either way, it doesn't matter. And it will go like that and we just nip it up on the end here and it will lock it. So hopefully you can see the two sloping surfaces there on the cotter and how they're going to grip the two and a half inch diameter bar on the machine. So we'll go over to the machine now and try this out and see how it fits. Good. That seems to grip very well. So I'm just really putting the lightest nip on this nut here and it's solid. So in practice I guess I tighten it up a bit more than that. But yeah, that cotter seems to work very well. <laughs> 